Well, good evening and welcome to another edition of How to Rock the Stage. I'm the Trigger, Rich Von Trigger, and we're here tonight once again to help you shine on camera and stage and share tips and tricks that better get you elevating your brand authority to the amazing world of media. By the way, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. It is the festive season, so you got to be in the, the role, right? You, you, you got to come ready to have a little festivity and fun here tonight, and we are going to have fun tonight. Great to see we've got uh, Mindy, we've got Aaron, we've got David. Welcome as you beam on in here tonight. And as the crowd shuffles in, no pushing, no shoving. Because now with the virtual world, everyone has front seats. There are no bad back seats. So enjoy it. The chat box is open tonight. We already do have one item in there for you if you want to take a look at that. But we'll share more about that and other things. But it is one of the resources that our guests tonight will be talking about as we talk about the future of media. Media is changing so fast. The world of the networks is crumbling, changing, morphing. I've got over 30 years of radio and TV broadcast um, career path in me. I have seen a change from real to real to digital to now we're streaming and there's apps and it's amazing what has happened. And tonight we're going to get into that whole conversation. Coming up next week, we only have two more shows left before the end of the year, by the way. Next week, it's going to be video testimonials. We're going to be talking about that. It better help you get great content to help elevate you and your brand. Video testimonials are a powerful resource that I use, and we're going to have a great guest. Terry Knott is going to be our guest coming up on that. And then December 21st, coming up on Christmas there, Robbie Samuels is going to join us. And no bad Zoom experiences. He does virtual events and Zoom events and makes them fun and entertaining. He's great at this. And we're going to talk about no more bad experiences on Zoom or any platform you work on. You don't want to miss that. And then we're going to give you the December 28th. We're going to give you that off between Christmas and New Year's. And we have some great New Year's announcements. So you're going to want to come back on the 14th and the 21st to learn about the new evolution, the new future of the media here at Rock the Stage Media. Tonight, Mark Hirschberg is going to be our guest. And Mark, well, he says there's a fundamental problem across media. He sums it up by saying where you read ideas, where you read ideas isn't where you need ideas. He'll go deeper into that, by the way. Mark is going to speak with us today about the future of media and what he describes as a nonlinear content engagement. We're going to learn what that means, what that looks like, and how that content now includes authors, speakers, podcasters, bloggers, and much more. Welcome to the virtual stage tonight, Mark. And Mark, welcome as you come live on the stage. Great to see you tonight. Hey, great to see you, Rich. Thanks so much for having me on the show tonight. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for your upcoming shows. I've seen Robbie and he's fantastic. So I'm looking forward to that episode as well. Isn't Robbie a hoot? He just goes, and he is at living and high energy. It's a blast to be with Robbie. He's just absolutely fantastic, and we can all learn a lot from him. So we're going to get into this whole future of media, and I'm really excited about this because I teased it out earlier on my 2 o'clock live show, but media is changing. And like I said, I go back to real to real. So cutting and splicing with a razor blade, the old audio tape, and I've seen the evolution. I've gone to cartridges. I've gone to CDs. I've gone now to digital banks where you don't, don't have to do anything but press a button. Where do you see the future of media going? Right now, where do you think we're at? And where do you think we're going? What you've described, where we go from reel to reel to 8-track to cassette to CDs to DVDs and now streaming, honestly, that's not even the right way to look at it because those are all linear. You had to play the eight track start to end. You had to play the cassette tape start to end. Okay, we could jump around a little easier on a DVD. I remember or VHS cassettes, we had to fast yeah, forward. We were those. But still, if you think about how we have traditionally engaged content, it is linear. It is watching the show start to finish. It is reading a book first page to last page. There have only been a tiny number of exceptions. The encyclopedia, you don't read start to finish. A few people do, but you're usually doing nonlinear access. I need this information, go in, get it done. 
come back for more later. And what we're starting to see is we can take our content. Now we've thought about how do we take our content and repurpose it? Something I know you've talked about in the past. How mm -hmm. do I take the podcast I turn into a blog and then take clips and I put on social media? But people won't necessarily access all the content in that podcast or blog post in a linear fashion. There might be some key ideas from later in the show that's relevant for me right now. And I might grab that and I can skip the first part. And so we as content creators need to think not about here is the holistic set. Now, you might do that if you're a fiction writer. You can't jump in 160 pages into a book and know what's going on. But many of us with content, when we're writing a book, recognize, or we have a podcast or a talk, people might jump to different parts. And we need to make bite-sized pieces, think Legos, where our content consumers can construct what they need from our content resource. I love Legos. So you got me at Legos, okay? I mean, right, right there, you got me at Legos. And just to take the illustration, being a Lego creator, I love that you can create one thing and off one thing, you can morph it, twist it, edit it. And it's still that one thing. The blacks are the same, but you're rearranging them in different ways to get a slightly different thing. That is now our media world. That is exactly where we live today, isn't it? If you think about a book, so often you might say, well, I need some introductory chapters, or you do this in a talk. And there are people saying, I don't need the introduction. I don't want to sit here for 10 minutes where you tell me things I already know. Jump ahead. Jump ahead to what I want. Now, in a book, okay, I can flip pages, or I can fast forward to chapter two or however it's indexed. But we want to go even further, even more detailed, where someone might say, I need this particular type of help that's threaded through your book. It's not just okay, chapter three plus, or it's not just this 15 minute section in your talk. Well, it's a couple points here and a couple points there, a little over there. And how can I get that thread that is relevant to my needs? Because we have traditionally put out a one size fits all piece of content and we need to design it to let our consumers grab what they need when they need it and get a customized but highly valuable and relevant experience. So, for example, YouTube and other channels have added in chapters. So if you put in the liner notes now, you go to 10, 10, 0, 2, 3, whatever, you can go to that point and pick up the conversation. They'll tell you what your soundbite is, what the next action point is. So they began to move that direction. And more and more, it is becoming pick your own journey adventure with media now. You don't have to stay here or there. You literally can jump and move including with books, which I'm fascinated by this, and I know you deal with publishers, you can now put QR codes and access codes in to literally your reading. They'll tell you what this is, but if you want to learn more, click on that or you know scan that and you'll bring up a video, which now has a sensory other element besides the word in print. How far is that going to go? I think that's going to continue. And again, just going to video, this is just the start. So let's now look at this from a different perspective. Let's go back to that quote of mine that you used to start, where you read information isn't where you need information. Now, this is true, not just for books we read or blogs we read, but the podcast, the audio, the video. Let's recognize two cases where this might be true. I have a book and one of the chapters is on networking. Okay, networking, great. We all wanna get better at networking. Where are you likely to be reading that book? sitting on your couch at home. You're probably not doing a lot of networking. You've met your spouse, you know your dog pretty well, you don't have to really build that relationship. It's two months later as you walk into the conference, you're saying, oh boy, those network tips, I need them here and now. You're probably not carrying my book with you. So how do you get access to that content right there on the spot? Not the whole book, just either that chapter or even there were certain things. I remember those things were really useful, yeah. but what were they? You want to pull it up, make it very context dependent. The other way we might need content is you're new at doing something. Let's say you are new to content branding. Boy, you know, I, I got to focus on content branding. It's a key part of my business. There's so much to learn and you're not going to know exactly when or where you need to think content branding. Sure, you have your calendar, think branding strategy but you want ideas to percolate throughout the day. 
So you need to keep this content top of mind. Now we know if you read something once or hear a podcast once, you quickly forget it. We know spaced repetition work, you need to have it repeated. That's why we opened the textbook again and again before the test, so we could remember it. But you're not rereading books, you're not watching this video 17 times. So what yes, if they we- are. <laughs> we'd like you to. <laughs> Unfortunately, it, it, I, I'm sorry to tell you, it's only 16. They fall off at number 17. <laughs> so what if we could reinforce those ideas? So imagine if you got each day at 9 a.m. as you went to the office, you got a reminder of one of the ideas you heard from this webinar. Go, all oh, right, there it is again. A few days are, oh, there it is again. And you get these different points and they're constantly reminding you. It takes two seconds a day. You just get that reminder. It's like a daily affirmation with the advice and it's going to build up in your head and you retain it. So the key is that we need to provide content when and where people want it. Love all that. I hope you guys are digesting this because it's really, it's a revolutionary time right now. And I know we have people streaming on Facebook. Thanks for being along with us tonight. You can drop in the chat, ask a question. And we have our live audience here. We're going to launch our poll right now about the future of television, the future of TV. And it's really easy tonight. Is TV, as we have it now, dying? Yes, no way, or maybe. Cast your vote. We're going to come back to that in a little while as Mark and I continue to talk because, Mark, you talk about these apps that are coming away, and we never even thought about apps before. It was ABC, NBC. It was network-driven. It was, oh, my, you paid thousands upon thousands of dollars to get on TV, to do an advertisement. Now we live in the day of grab your phone, get an app, you're live streaming. Uh, I know you're taking it a bit further. So talk about what you're developing, just so we understand the real potential of this. It's, it's, it's not theory how you are in your layering things together. You've actually created a device, makes print, media, word, posting, all one-stop shop. I practice what I preach, and we patented a technology and created an app based on it. So let's think about these two challenges. As a content consumer, you want to get that content when and where you need it, whether it's that just in time, I need the networking tips right now for the next five minutes, or whether you want that foundational, just kind of quickly remind me, get into my head at this time when I'm, when I'm thinking about when it's relevant. So you want to pull that content towards you. And if you think about social media, social media is completely misaligned for this purpose. When you are a thought leader like you or I or many of our listeners, Think, okay, well, I'm a leadership coach. So it's 3.52 p.m. on a Thursday. I'm going to tweet my leadership advice. What happens? Well, first, most of your audience probably isn't going to see it. They're not on Twitter at the time or in the next window, and they don't even see it. The ones who do see it, they might say, yeah, yeah, that's great. But right now, I'm trying to hire people. I'm trying to close sales. Leadership is not my concern at this moment. So I'm just going to scroll past it. Yeah. Three months from now, say, so, okay, now, boy, I hire those people. I close the sales. Now I need to think about leadership. Do you think they're going back to your social media and saying, let me scroll through all those old tips? Maybe you had a good point three months ago, six months ago. I, I got to go find it. They don't want it. And it's because the content from these media channels, it's temporal. And they focus on recency in the head. But if you create evergreen content, as a leadership coach, as someone who talks about media, your advice is good two days from now, two months from now, two years from now. So you don't want order temporally. You want to create it in a way where the content consumer can pull it right when and where she needs it, and it's instantly relevant. So the time-space continuum is broken now with you. <laughs> <laughs> we warp it. We warp it so you can go not just one direction. You can go back in time. You can go sideways any way you want to slice and dice it. So with the app, we created the Brain Bump app, and you've got the link there. If you go to brainbumpapp.com, you can see us. You can play along, follow along as we talk about it. brainbumpapp.com is completely free. If you go to that website, you download from one of the stores, Android, iPhone, completely free. When you add the app to your phone, what it lets you do is you can start adding content. Content refers to books, blogs, 
podcasts, classes, talks. It's all just different formats of media. Mm -hmm. So you got great advice in each one of these. Now, it might be something you already know. Oh, I'm reading this book. I love it. I want to remember it. Could be, I've never heard of this podcast before, but I want to check it out. So I'm going to download the content. We don't require proof of purchase. So you can check out books that look interesting that you haven't bought yet. When you add that content to your app, you get the tips. You get the key ideas from it. It's what you would highlight in the book. It's the audiograms that they might have posted on social media. So you get these key things are just text, typically one to three sentences in length, and they are all tagged. Think like hashtags. They're tagged by category. So if you're at that conference we've been talking about, you say, I need those networking tips. You pull out the app. You've got my book installed. So you just click. And then you go to the filters and say, what tag do I want? I want networking tips. Boom, there they are. In five seconds, you have pulled up relevant information to the situation you are in. And so it gives you that pull, not push. And I want to highlight here because I've been able to see him develop this. It's morphed and morphed and morphed. But the interesting thing is content creators are adding more content in all the time. So it's not like it's a stationary product you are getting more of those. If you go back in a week later and put the same keyword back in, you will probably get more information on new and fresh stuff, plus the stuff you already know. And you can bookmark it. You can literally bookmark your own tabs of those topics you love, all these other resources and other content creators. And if they add video in the future, if they add another iteration of the book, you will get updates on that. So it really is a non-linear platform, isn't it? That's right. We're constantly adding new content. We're like a streaming service. You don't say, well, Netflix, they've got 100 shows. That's it. There's always new stuff. We're always getting new content added to the platform for content that changes. A book can be static, yep. but a podcast, a blog, there's new episodes and they have new tips. And if you've added that blog, that podcast, when those new tips are added to the platform, your app instantly gets updated with them. You don't have to go back. It's just instantly it gets added. Now we've talked about the just-in-time access. We've talked about, I'm going to pull up those networking tips when I need it. Mm -hmm. But there's also that daily piece. There's that, this is foundational. And so for each content you add, what you get is a push notification at a time you set for the content you want. It it's might like be- It's like an alarm clock. It's like, it's like an, an alarm, alarm clock with that note flying in, right? Exactly. And look, if you don't want, you can turn it off. We don't bother people with notifications they don't want. We don't send you extra notifications. We don't track your data. So this is all things you want to get. So it might be you get that leadership tip at 9 a.m., now, we're just business content, but you could imagine when we expand to other areas, maybe you want that marriage tip at 6 p.m. Okay, start my day thinking about leading, going home. Okay, how do I make my spouse happy? And so you can get the information delivered to you when and where it's relevant for you. And it's not spam. So how many of us every day get emails from different people, different providers, different services? And it just be so much. We now can control the rate of that. I also do want to jump into the idea of the future of mini media right now is changing to live. For so long, it has been recorded, audio podcasts, other shows, uh, even Hollywood. Everything has been record, play, record, play. More and more of the world is going back to live, which I personally love. I love the live theater. I love the live shows. And now, even with Rock to Stage, one of our announcements coming up is we're going to be changing the restream our show will be on multiple platforms as we go live or not just right now we're on Facebook. We'll be on multiple platforms and building our network. You can literally build your own media and network now with the future of media. You don't need to wait for ABC or NBC. You don't need to republish it as we record live. My 2 p.m. show goes right to my YouTube. It's already ready to be played back, Mark. Amazing new technology lets us immediately go live, multiple streams. You have the playback right away, and then you can chop it up in the micro content. Where else do you see this new, amazing live world taking us? What we've really done is we've democratized 
the media platform? Because if you think back to when we were kids and you had three broadcast channels and they controlled everything, and I couldn't start my own broadcast station, but now you can literally start your own TV station effectively, your own radio channel on the internet. And so we are seeing more and more of these micro platforms. We're seeing more types of engagement. And because storage is cheap, if you remember back to the early days of media, it used to be they broadcast it. Not only didn't we have our home video recorders or DVRs to save it, they didn't even have it. I'm a big Doctor Who fan. Doctor Who, they're missing episodes. Yes. It, it was too expensive for them to save it. Well, the very first show or people to do reruns syndication, the idea came from Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz and the Lucy show. And they literally thought, we've been going and people haven't got caught up. They have no idea what the storyline about little Ricky is. And they realized we need to save these and repurpose. They didn't use that word, but put them back in reruns. That was the first version. Then it went to what we saw with MASH and Star Trek and other shows. And they went to syndication. Now we have instantaneous replay on demand with Hulu, Netflix, Roku. We are now able to watch a show and an hour later go watch it again right away. And now you can do that with your own media content, Mark. You can do that yourself, like you just said. And by the way, for those who don't know all the contributions of Lucio Ball and Desi Arnaz, they are true pioneers, not only just fantastic actors and a great show. They pioneered so much technology. They changed the way TV is done and are just incredible, incredible people who really deserve to be in the museum for just their incredible innovation. Well, and just on that whole replay rerun syndication, people do not realize, uh, like Star Trek, the original series was only three seasons. We are 50 years later. And it's still plain seen right now around the world as if it was a new show for new viewers. The replay is where the real power is, Mark. As much as I love lives, record everything, replay it. Record it, do a short version. Record it, do a teaser video. The replay is where the real magic is for media content. It is, whether it's from the fact that I was not alive for the original Star Trek series, but I am so glad I could grow up watching it. It was relevant to me at a later time. Now, have me relate to my age and entertainment, but likewise, someone right now is going to love this episode, but they are busy at the moment, or they're in a different business, and it's not until two years from now that they realize, I need to think about media and content and now I have to start searching and they find this episode and it becomes relevant to them then. And so by putting it out, we're letting people pull it as opposed to these old days where he said, it's eight o'clock, I gotta get home so I can watch Lucy or else I'll miss the episode. Here's our poll came back. I'm curious what you're thinking on this as we're going through our conversation. And again, from our live audience with us tonight, the future of TV, yes, it is dying. And a couple of people said, maybe, what's your take on this? Do you think broadcast TV, as we have been describing it, is now dying? Or is it already dead and we just haven't pulled the blanket up on it? I think it depends on our definition of TV. Because if it means having a broadcast station and having satellites in space, that's really expensive. And why do you need these broadcast stations when like, literally you and I, this could be broadcast on CBS. They're probably not going to do it, even though obviously they should for a quality program like this. But, but they're not. We don't need to have satellites. We don't need the overhead and infrastructure that they have. And so that part will change. But the idea of having sets of content what we see is you've got Netflix and Disney and HBO and Paramount Plus and sets of content. And whether I'm watching on my traditional television or my laptop screen or other things, I'd say that is TV in the modern incarnation. I don't think that is going away. Mm -hmm. But the old broadcast at a fixed time, that's going to be changing. 
Well, and again, even right now, uh, I watch a lot of HBO Plus. I watch a lot of Paramount Plus. They are distinguishing between Catch It Live Tuesday nights and streaming on Blank Plus on Thursday nights. They are literally saying one night, 48 hours later, you can go watch it again. It's really becoming that bang, bang, bang. And again, now as a content creator, think about this. You can embed your own streaming show on your website. You can have down below the reruns of those. You can have some micro content. You can do some behind the scenes. The stuff that we talk about behind the scenes before we go live in the green room, you could do that. The second half of this show, by the way, stick around. We're going to open up the Q&A, the cameras, microphones come on. The second half of this show is not the part that goes live with the audience when we do our replays. We hold the Q&A for bonus content. Amazing things you can do now as the future of broadcast continues to unfold, but you literally can edit, cut, and put them on timers, and you can have them appear on your website at your own broadcast schedule, can't you, Mark? You could even imagine, we happen to be doing this together. We have our recording right now, and then the Q&A afterwards. But imagine if two weeks, two years from now, we say, this is really good. There were a bunch of people who have seemed interested in this, but I know they weren't there originally. So replay the original episode with you and I on standby that as soon as it ends, we do another live Q&A. That's not something we could do before, but we can do it now. That's what Big Brother and all these other shows have done. They end the season show, they bring everyone back together. You literally can do that replay party and do exactly what Mark just described. The ideas are really endless now for where we can go as content creators. And this is where I coach people to think like media. You need to think like a media broadcast empire. What we used to do, you can do now. And you can be a pioneer to help create new stuff. So Mark, what do you think are some of the new things that you're kicking around your head that you'd like to see happen? One of the important things to keep in mind is we have a couple different types of media. What we're talking about doesn't apply equally to all media. There is evergreen content, where especially you might want to make it accessible when and where someone wants it. There's temporal content. If our show was about who's wearing what on the red carpet, that might be fun. We're not doing this when the Oscars are on, but if it was, okay, we're talking about that, and that's fun for a day or two before, after. No one's going back saying, hey, let's see, what were people wearing 2012 red carpet? It's past. Yeah. Or when you're talking politics or late night TV, it's very temporal. And so for there, you want a different type of experience than you do with Evergreen. We can also think about fiction versus nonfiction. I'll touch a little bit on fiction. We're talking mostly nonfiction here. That's who the audience is. But if you think about fiction, the key is going beyond the page. If you think about your favorite fiction, You've wanted to do things after you're done reading the book, whether it's I'm playing with my Star Wars action figures and I'm making my own little adventures, or I'm going to Harry Potter world, or it tends to be a lot of sci-fi and fantasy. Even if you are a fan of Downton Abbey, you can go take a tour. You, I want to go see where it was. And that's giving you the experience off the page. Well, that's another thing we haven't even talked about is the mobility now. You can go do a live and walk through Disney at the park and talk about your great adventure at the park, a live streaming. There is so much you can do in the moment, still save it, so replay it, so edit it. But we never had that when we were growing up. The phone was home. The phone was stationary. It was glued to the wall. But now you literally have global access in a whole new way. And it's fun to think about really the future of media. We're going to talk more about this. Uh, so stick around. We are going to open up for Q&A for questions for a few moments here. Go backstage with Mark. Mark, I just dropped in some links, some social stuff. What's the best way to get in touch with you and follow up more about the Brain Bump and just this future media discussion as well? Or Brain Bump, if you go to brainbumpapp.com, you can learn more about the app. Again, follow the links to download the free app. If you're interested in getting your content on there, because you know this will help you engage your audience when they're done reading your book, done hearing your episode, there's a form at the bottom where you can reach out and get in touch with me, or you can hit me up at Cognosco Media, C-O-G-N-O-S-C-O Media.com. 
And there you can read some of the articles that give you some of the theory and philosophy behind this. And there are forums where you can get in touch with me. And don't forget how the Rocks of Stage is here every week live at seven o'clock Eastern time. And again, coming up in 2023, we're going to be streaming on multiple channels. We literally are going to take some of the things we're talking about tonight and begin implementing them even broader with How to Rock the Stage Show. If you're looking for media coaching, the better how to show up on camera, the better do your podcast. Are you looking for media skills to help you shine and communicate? I love the coach and help you elevate you and your brand. Contact me, Rich, at richbontrager.net or just visit rockthestagemedia.com.